Tripoli Grand Prix was the original destination Grand Prix race. It began in 1925 and was put on by the Italian government as a way to increase and encourage tourism to their northern African colonies. The race by name was run in the city of Tripoli in modern-day Libya and took place originally on a street course from 1925 through 1930, but interest waned. The street course wasn't incredibly popular, and of course, by standards of the time, it was actually really difficult for European teams to get their cars there, even the Italian ones. They really didn't have the option of flying, and so they actually had to put their cars on boats, sail them across the Mediterranean to northern Africa. There's some great footage online of the cars being unloaded from the ships in northern Africa, and they really didn't disassemble the cars at all to travel them. It seems like they maybe rode them onto the ships and then unloaded loaded them the same way, uh, very different than things would travel these days. So it seemed like the idea of running a Grand Prix race in Northern Africa wasn't going to work out, but the government went back to the drawing board and ended up building a state-of-the-art eight-mile road circuit around Lake Malaha near Tripoli. This circuit was quickly crowned the quickest Grand Prix circuit in the world, with lap speeds over 100 miles an hour. The circuit itself is quite basic in design. It's basically a rectangle with really long straightaways and a couple sharp corners uh, that circles like Malaha and actually a little Italian airstrip at the time, which later became an Air Force base. The high speeds, of course, owe itself to the long straightaways, but a few of the corners actually featured banking, which increased the speeds even further. The crowning jewel of the circuit was the front straightaway complex with a massive 10,000 spectator grandstand, a state-of-the-art scoreboard, and even one of the first light systems to start the races, all the way back in the 1930s. As a locale, I think this circuit is one of the most unique places that a Grand Prix race has ever been held. The combination of the wide open desert, the palm trees, the ultra high speeds and racing past the city of Tripoli create one of the most interesting locales I think has ever held a Grand Prix. It really feels like you've gone back to a different time, uh, even more so racing at this circuit than any other. The inaugural running at this circuit in 1933 was really built up by the government and they ran a lottery uh, for the race where you could bet on the drivers and they actually turned it into a bit of a scandal where a few of the drivers also bet uh, how the finishing order was going to work out and change the results of the race to benefit themselves. Whether or not that's true, we'll never know, but the inaugural race was a massive success. The drivers loved the circuit uh, and the race in 1933 was won by Achille Farsi in a Bugatti and he went on to win the race two more times in 1934 and 1936, but the race was really dominated as most of the races were in the 1930s by the German teams Auto Union and Mercedes-Benz. Rudy Caracciola came away with the win in 1935, and then Hermann Lang went on to win three years in 37 through 39, driving for Mercedes-Benz. The final running of the Tripoli Grand Prix was in 1940, uh, won by Giuseppe Farina in an Alfa Romeo, I believe his only win ever at top-level Grand Prix racing. Uh, but that year was not attended by the Germans, and the race was never run again after the Second World War. So the race has faded away in time and is not one you really hear about much anymore, but reading up more and more on Grand Prix racing before World War II, the Tripoli Grand Prix comes up all the time. It was really a highlight, especially on the quick circuit around Malaha Lake. I went searching for a way to drive this track. I wanted to see what it was like to race around, and there's really only two sims that I could find that have the track at all, and it's actually the same version of the circuit. It was built for Grand Prix Legends initially by one Sergio Loro and converted to R-Factor, the original R-Factor, and that's where we have it today. Uh, the conversion itself is fairly well done and it was actually added to. Of course, it's not up to the standard of a modern sim, but it actually looks really good and from videos and pictures that I've seen, it's fairly accurate, at least in how it looks. I decided I wanted to show this off in our factor over Grand Prix Legends so that I could take a look at the 1937 Grand Prix mod. This is a mod that originally came out for our factor and I think has gone under notice since it came out right at the end of the original R factors lifetime in 2012. The mod itself was put out by Team Vintage and was billed as a part one and unfortunately no other part ever followed. The mod itself is incredibly well done and researched and came with five different cars, three from the top Grand Prix class and two from the smaller 1500cc class. Those who have driven it know it's incredibly difficult to handle and that coupled with the fact that it's from an obscure time period and came out right at the end of R Factor's lifespan I think all contributed to this one flying under the radar for most. 
This mod now is being converted to newer sims like Automobilista and Assetto Corsa, but going back to the original, there's some really unique features that are a part of it and everything just feels right. Although the mod only features three top level Grand Prix cars, I think they pretty much sum up uh, what was available to top level motorsports in 1937. You of course have the two German cars, the Auto Union, Type C and the Mercedes W125, but then you also have the Alfa Romeo 12C36 that Tazio Nuvolari drove, and what a beast that car is. So I've brought the three top-level Grand Prix cars to the Lake Malaha circuit and have been practicing the past few nights just trying to get around the track, put some laps together. I've chosen to drive the Mercedes-Benz W125, which is probably the hardest of the three cars to drive overall. The car itself was truly insane. It had a supercharged straight eight engine that could put out over 600 horsepower uh, on these skinny tires. It was incredibly successful winning 50% of the races it entered, and if you look at its competition being the Auto Union Type C, uh, it was very evenly matched for that car, but drives incredibly different. So I want to tempt fate and take the 125 for a three lap race around the Malaha Lake Tripoli Grand Prix circuit and just show how incredible and dangerous and spectacular this all was. All right, so here we are at the back of the grid and you can see up on the right, the high-tech lights flashing red. Green, we're underway. It's gonna be a pretty wild start. Everybody trying to get the power down. Ooh, we got an Auto Union sideways there. Just bumping the Alpha in front, but now able to get away. <laughs> the AI and R Factor off the line are not the best, but once we get going, they're, they're all right. We'll come through lazy left-hander now onto a straightaway and still struggling to get the power down up to third gear. Dance the car, you'll see never stop moving the wheel, but now burst out into the desert, the wide open desert, so cool. Past palm trees here and there. They always seem to be there if you go off the track. Through a couple slower corners, or fast corners really. This group side by side in front trying to fight with each other, but now we'll come to a very slow corner, try to outbreak a few of these cars. <laughs> Maybe the lot of the Alphas, so we'll come into the turn, lock in the right front a bit. It's such a slow corner as we had one of the Mercedes off in front, but so hard to get the power down. These cars do not handle well, if it's not apparent. Now just fighting to get the throttle down, we'll head onto one of the first cambered corners. This is the purpose-built part of the circuit. Go up to a second gear right-hander here. Just dance the car through. Easy to run wide there, but now past the airfield. We started off small military airfield here on the right. This corner now, very difficult, kind of blind just with the desert colors and everything. And a little tighter than you think it would be. <laughs> just working that wheel, it's coming off the corner sideways. And now into a faster section. In third gear through here, cars in front a little slower than I could go. But you gotta wait for a place to pass. It's not an easy circuit to pass on, it's quite narrow as circuits would be at the time. Up to fourth gear finally. The 125 should be a little quicker than the Auto Union in a straight line but they can get that power down and of course corner better than the 125. Now back into the trees to work back towards the city. In this corner coming up, one of the most difficult, they'll stay in line here. The camber does nothing but upset the car going through and coming out of it, you gotta line up straight because there's a heavy braking back down to second gear. Maybe one of the most difficult corners simply because it does have a wall next to it. But now back into the city here. to get the power down 25 percent throttle pretty much through there back up to third for just a second we'll come over the top of this hill back to second gear but this corner a little bit faster of course cambered bit of a hop on the entry still easy to run wide in it might look like 
babying the cars around the slower corners, but you really cannot turn very quickly uh, through anything. You can throw a car through a fast corner, but any kind of slow corner, you really have to slow down for. It's just no grip at all on these cars. All right, now back onto the front straightaway, though. Up in third gear, get up to fourth just poke out of the trees here and we'll see that huge grandstand again in context of the rest of the track you can see how crazy and remarkable it was but come complete the first of three here at Lake Malaha we'll come to the first corner dab of the brakes Ooh, a couple cars in front are really slow see if I can get a good run coming out of the turn two auto unions there to the right side, flash past him. Flat out still now in fourth gear. And dip it into the desert. You're still massaging the throttle as much as the wheel just to get the car to behave through any of these corners. So we'll head to the heavy braking zone now. So easy to lock things up and run wide like I did on the first lap there. Oh, I can see my braking from last time through. See if I can sneak it past the Auto Union. A little more speed through the slow stuff than the AI. Once I get off the line there, a little better behaved. Give me something to race against at least. No Caracciola though. Back down to second here as we'll come up to the airfield again. And you might notice one of the most unique things in our factor about this mod. Oh, I'm on the dirt a little bit, slowing the car acceleration down. I got that out of Union right behind me. Slow it down for this right-hander. Deceptively slow corner. But yeah, one of the most unique things about this mod in our factor is the view system. You can see oh, as the car moves, the view yaws side to side. Definitely contested when this mod came out. A lot of people don't like it. One of the things you see bundled with this mod all over the internet is uh, files to fix this or make the view more static. I can totally understand why people wouldn't like it, but I think it's kind of cool. It definitely brings a unique aspect to, to this mod overall. And if you look at video footage, from the time of drivers driving these cars. They did lean a lot in the cockpit to help crank these huge steering wheels side to side, and so it kind of gives that impression of the gravity forces. It's obviously not, not for everybody's taste. It might actually make you slower because the view's moving around so much, but I think for a video to it, it has a cool dynamic aspect to it. But All right, rushing back to the city of Tripoli. Come down to second gear. In this circuit overall, it's GPL track originally converted to R-Factor. It's spruced up, like I said, a bit, but it does resemble the actual circuit pretty well from video and photographs that I've seen. The track really was narrow like this through the desert, palm trees on every side, on these banked corners with the little pylons on the outside and the wall. The wall itself, the walls there, like we have in this corner. Roll it through, oh, kick the back out a little bit. That was considered high-tech safety to have a wall on the edge of the track. If you think about your other option being the trees, I guess I would rather hit the wall like that. All right, get the throttle down, come back to the start, finish straight, complete the second lap. You can see the Auto Union behind me. I've lost sight a little bit of the cars in front, but I'll see what I can put together here in the last lap. The sound of the car is so awesome. We'll come to the first corner, throw the car sideways, hug that inside wall, just guide it through. That's how you take that corner, high speed. Driving these cars, when you get it right, when you get a good lap in, definitely is very satisfying. oversteer, come straight, try to spot some kind of braking, you kind of have to use the trees to figure out when to slow the car down. So easy to overdo it though, and you really have no other options, the brakes just don't work after a certain point. 
A lot of engine braking, of course, just guided slowly through the corner. Short shifting on acceleration helps a little bit. It's slower but safer. And I've talked about it in other videos with this time period before, but these cars burnt fuel and tires very quickly. I think you could only do about six to eight laps of this circuit on a tank of fuel. It's so over a 300 mile race. They pit quite a few times. Which puts a lot of work on crews, especially back in these days. Up to the top of the hill though. Try not to run wide on the final lap. Catching the cars in front ever so slightly. I think I'm quicker than about on the AI around here as I have them set. But just quick enough that I'll come close on the final lap. Flat out now. Baby the throttle a little bit. Oh, right up to the edge of the circuit. Fourth gear. Come back to the forested section. Much bigger penalty to running wide. You can hear the engine RPM rise. That's the car slipping as you go sideways. The tires actually lose grip even at a high speed like this. You start spinning the tires. Easy to do in any of the gears. All right, we'll come to the slow second gear corner. Heel towing all the way down the gearbox from fourth to second. Oh, just trying to drift the car. Oh, don't run into the wall. Not able to get the power down there. Quite good enough. Coming to the final corner. Final real corner. Oh, throwing the car in quite fast. Just see the cars in front, but I'm not going to be able to get them. So we'll come to the front straight away. Maybe one more lap. I think I'm quicker through the first half of the lap. Ugh, but so satisfying to do some laps around this circuit. I'm so happy to have seen what it's all about. And it really was one of the most remarkable racetracks and Grand Prix of the pre-war or interwar period. Come to the line, round out, I think finishing in fourth position. So a massive challenge, but extremely rewarding to learn how to drive these cars around this circuit and do it somewhat quickly. I think I got a lot of work to do, but uh, just getting my toes wet and driving this mod is is super fun. I think this one deserves uh, an R Factor 1 light installation and very easy to do uh, to be racing around some of these tracks in these cars. But happy to have experienced even a little bit Tripoli. I hope at some point this track uh, is created for more sims and, and greater fidelity, although I'm I'm quite pleased with this version of it. Very interesting to learn about the event and really is different. I, I really cannot look at uh, modern Formula One or racing in general and think of uh, anything that quite captures this type of atmosphere. So I hope you enjoyed it. I want to look at more stuff from this period. I'm all about the uh, interwar and pre-war Grand Prix at the moment. So expect more videos on a similar topic. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.